So treatment next generation. Of course, I can't imagine that the diet will be completely knocked out, at least not for the time being. Um, and there have been multiple therapy options. Um, the orthotopic liver implants that Dr. Koch mentioned had um, uh, basically was uh, attempted on one patient who had liver failure. And this was, um, it was very successful in the fact that the PK was completely reversed. However, it certainly with transplants, it's not an easy thing. It's not a very safe thing and cer certainly is very limited in its availability. Other options that have been at attempted, the competition at the intestinal and blood brain barrier with the large neutral amino acids. This was uh, a very um, controversial at one point. And of course, as Dr. Koch mentioned, they were trying it in Denmark under the help of uh, Femming Gutler for many, many years. And certainly it has helped a lot of patients, but mostly those patients who were uncompliant. Gene therapy. Now, am I allowed to pick a fight with Dr. Koch? I'm not quite sure. Um, I want to disagree with him. I think this is the future of, of PKU. Um, and I've contributed to a completely different thing, so I have no um, stocks in this. <laughs> but I've been hearing some incredible things on gene therapy. And I have to say that right now there are ethical issues. But you should know that the scientific community, and I've asked them, why work on PKU? Why do gene therapy on PKU when there is a treatment? And all of them say, well, one day we want to have gene therapy for PKU as well. And there are some great advances that are going on in this. Of course, there's a, it'll be a long time before it goes into humans. But I think it will be within my lifetime. And um, I'm looking forward to that. So keep your eye peeled for that. Uh, it's quite exciting. Of course, the other option was the treatment with the BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin, saparopterin, QVAN. They're all the same thing. Um, that was well explained in the last two lectures. And really what happens with this sort of a thing uh, is, is that you've got, perhaps uh, you'd have to have um, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme that is partially functional. So if you do give them a dose of BH4, it's like taking out one of the needles from the back. And perhaps the patient will not be as functional, the, the, sorry, the PAH won't be as functional, but it'll be functional enough to go about its daily functions. So th that's the, the main idea. But what happens when those, uh, with, with those patients who do not respond to saproptrin um, whatsoever? Our work has focused on phenylase, enzyme substitution therapy with phenylalnimonia lyase, PAL, and so I'll quickly describe what PAL is. PAL is basically a protein, it's an enzyme, and it carries all the information required for its catalytic activity. Now you may be asking, why didn't we try it with PAH? And in fact, we did try it with PAH. And PAH was so difficult to control. It had so many cofactor issues, temperature issues, pH issues. <laughs> it needed oxygen. It needed this, that, and the other. And it was such a difficult enzyme. It's basically an evolved enzyme. And once it's knocked out, it requires a lot of evolved systems for it to function again. So it was a very difficult enzyme to work with. PAL, on the other hand, was very, very easy to work with. 